with Core Medical Group and the Rejuvenation Station. My buddy Matt with Fro Pro. Super excited to have him aboard. Nice. He's a big celebrity here in the Delray area. Know and, about that. and uh you know, helps a lot of people, has a great local business that's going national probably. Well that's one of the goals, yeah. I would hope. I would hope. And super excited to have him uh on the show because um just like myself, he's gone through the growing pains of opening up a new business, starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. His own business model, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about that business. But Matt, first, can you tell us like where you're from, where you grew up, how you ended up in Florida, because most of us didn't start here. Yeah, no, I've uh, been down here since, let's say, like 2000, 2009. Um, I'm originally from New York, right outside the city, like uh, Westchester County, right by the Hudson Valley, like region. Nice. Uh, small town, most people don't know it, but it's near like, you know, other small towns. So <laughs> anybody that knows like Westchester, it's like right near Austin, where like Sing Sing Prison is, like White Plains, New Rochelle, things like that. So yeah, I've been down here since 2009. A job brought me down here. Uh, I was a teacher for a long time and a coach for a long time. And, school uh, teacher? Yep. What grade? Elementary school. Oh, so really? I came down here for a fourth grade position in a really nice school and uh, coaching varsity baseball and kind of like one of those package deals. Oh where, yeah, yeah, cool. You know, didn't have a family, no, you know, no attachments other than like my family that you know, like uh, I was raised with. But uh, came down here for the job and uh, ended up. Staying down here when a lot of poor decisions led me into a place of like uh, starting over, if you will. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I remained down here and didn't go back up north, which was the plan. So thankfully that plan didn't go through. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are all victims of making poor decisions. Yeah. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of poor decisions. In that time. But the good news is, is you rejuvenated it and uh, up in the same, you know, in a lot of directions. I mean, listen. Um, you know, we were just chatting before, mm -hmm. and you know how hard it is to be a business owner yeah. in South Florida, <laughs> and the uh, the amount of amazing things that happen when you stick to it and really focus on growing that business. Eventually, you weed out the bullshit. And for me, I don't know what your experience is. Right now, I have such a solid staff; it's amazing. I can count on people. I can delegate, which is what I feel like I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. And uh, South Florida is a hard place to to actually run run a business. Um, I, I would say it's like my only business that I've ever okay. started from the ground up, so I, I can't compare it. Like I've worked and managed, you know, restaurants and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. and I've been, you know, when you work in a school, it's kind of like you're on a team and you kind of get that, but this is the first business, like true business venture I've done on my own. So the only thing I can really compare it to is what I've done so far. And yeah, yeah. Again, other books that I read or experiences from people that, yeah. you know, are business owners like yourself. and listening and learning from people like you. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it, there are a lot of challenges um, in the business, it, starting and running your own business. So you were definitely an athlete growing up, played baseball, right? Uh, eventually, yeah. No, I, I didn't have any type, <laughs> and this will kind of make sense for a lot of people, I, I couldn't focus on one thing. Uh -huh. So I didn't really start playing sports till like middle school, high really? school, because I was just too hyper. Like, I'd be out in the, like, yeah, you know, I'd be out like running around the field. <laughs> the balls are falling yeah, next to you. Yeah, not paying attention. I'm like more curious about like climbing trees and running through the woods. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hunting stuff and um, and then kind of like channeled that into sports. And uh, my friends were doing the same thing. But like I was raised with the idea of like doing what you love. I had a musical family, a sports family, so I did music. And nice. I was kind of embarrassed about that because like I was good at music and like my friends that weren't were like, you know, you're. you're Band nerd, yeah, and, no, I get know, it. stuff like that. So yeah, we had a, it was tough. There's a bit of both, both worlds growing up that you know were uh, strongly encouraged by my family. So. Yeah. So and then you started playing ball and what? Yeah, I mean, I started like playing, you know, baseball, football, all the typical high school yeah, sports yeah, we play. Um, we weren't really. We had a small school, like it was a small public school, so there was, you know, there were certain teams that didn't exist. Like lacrosse wasn't big. But, yeah. Like, there was lacrosse schools that were big that were, you know, funneling kids to like sick colleges so yeah no i mean between music and playing sports and like being active like i just love being outside i love yeah. sweating i love you know doing what i was doing and eventually found the gym mm -hmm. through one of the coaches that uh was our strength trainer and started to like really enjoy the fact that like you know could essentially pick things up and put them down and like uh, yeah, yeah, feel yeah. good about it yeah, yeah yeah i mean the gym's the best that's the one thing i stay constantly with like i'll throw jujitsu in and kickboxing and my mountain biking and cycling and I'll go in and out of those phases, yeah. but I stay really consistent in some type of weight training atmosphere. Um, 
I definitely need some cardio. I was out in the middle of the woods deer hunting yesterday in the Everglades. I had to walk three miles in, three miles out yeah. in water. And I was like, dude, I was dying. And I realized that. I it's like a thousand degrees out. It's that, yeah, I dropped <laughs> nine pounds in water. Yeah, yeah, just all water yesterday. I was super dehydrated. But, you know, I like those types of challenges, those like really like you against the, the, the elements. The elements. Yeah, yeah it, it's big. So this is this is a big question because I don't know this, but how the fuck did you start this company out of everything? Like, uh, you know? well, it's, yeah, no, it's funny because uh, I, you know, through the kind of poor decision making and kind of losing focus and like the ability to do what I love and teaching and coaching and things like that, uh -huh. I kind of took a step back and, and started from scratch all over again, like a bunch of different things in my life, and you know, it, it literally was something where I. I you know, if you buy supplements, you buy protein shakes, buy all that stuff, and there was a point in time where, like, uh, I hate, you know, to say I wasn't able to afford it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, well, like, you know, what, what does one do if well, I... Well, it's a good thing you couldn't afford it. Right, yeah. yeah, I was yeah, like, now, because yeah <laughs> like, what, is, what does one do if you can't, you know, buy the this, that, or the other thing that you're normally used to buying and, like, not even thinking about? Yeah. And I had to be really kind of aware of what I was spending money on and yeah. um, kind of slowly just started making my own stuff and just like you know literally just making stuff in like a tray and messing around so with cooking sheets literally like what do i like to eat well, like i love peanut butter okay I'm like, all right i got peanut butter I mean, who, got does, some, who doesn't yeah. like peanut butter right. I, got some, <laughs> I got some protein powder i got some bananas i got you know like anything i had and like you know uh one of my you know my roommate at the time you know this was yeah yeah man it's crazy it's like you're 2009 2010 like well, you started this in 2010, so you're... Like, I just, like, started making the bar, like, you know, 2011, we say. It was, like, the time when I just started, like, making it for myself. And I would literally, like, in a brownie tray, just, like, cut up little pieces, put it in a bag. And then, you know, at the time, I wasn't driving due to poor decision-making. Yeah, yeah. And where I was biking, it would be like, all right, I'm going to stop, eat a little something, and just keep going. Yeah. Because um, it just held well. Uh -huh. Um and that kind of was one of those things where I was anywhere and I was like kind of just training and starting to get back into training people and I was working with other kids and still doing baseball clinics and I would bike everywhere and a lot of people like, you know, parents were like, oh man, this guy's super fit, he's biking everywhere. Not really, <laughs> not really knowing, like I wasn't really allowed to drive at the time. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, a couple people got to know me a little bit better and they're like, dude, what's the deal with biking? Like, you know, it's nice now and then 10 minutes from now it's gonna pour and you're gonna be stuck in the rain. I'm like, yeah, well, when I started to be comfortable with like telling people what I had gone through yeah. and like I made a lot of poor decisions and they're like, oh, that's like really, yeah, you know, it's really admirable. Like, you know, good for you. Yeah, and, the humility is huge in life. Yeah, and like again, like I was more embarrassed because like the stereotype, like people, yeah. like, people didn't think of me. I was a teacher, and now I can't yeah. drive. I can't do this, 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 this. And I was really super embarrassed about you know my situation and what I had done. Um, but like I had, you know, it's funny. I was carrying around this bar and I was just eating it one day and I was training one of my clients and our clients. Um, daughters and she's like so well, you were training people at, at that yeah time. i was just uh li i was doing whatever i could essentially like yeah, to, yeah to make some money to you know support myself and it was essentially you know i'd have a client you know kids would get out of school i would train a couple kids like 2 30 3 30 4 do a baseball clinic and then you know i had an office job that was you know part-time uh -huh. i did a lot of different things in terms of like working in offices, how like whatever I needed to do to make money in, in the best way possible. Like, yeah, you know, I don't want to say like rake leaves because you don't rake leaves down here. Yeah, like, but you wouldn't. Yeah, if someone was like, hey man, like wash my car, or, like mow my grass. Like, I probably, I don't know if I would have done that because it's like outside yeah. labor is really hard, and I admire the people that do it. Out yeah, here. It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's really hot. But like, if someone's like, hey, I need you to help me move something, no problem. Or like, you know, can you do this or that? So it just kind of got to the point where one of the, you know, one of the clients. Uh, kids was like I want to try it. I was like ask your mom because like as yeah. a teacher certain things yeah, can eat yeah. you know I'm like God forbid this kid eats it and like has allergic swells up his and 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 yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm screwed <laughs> yeah and uh, no it was great like kid tried it she loved it and was like you know and the mom was like you know like she's very picky what is in this and I told her she's like yeah okay she's like oh, no, so what do you call that and I was like uh, no I just make it it's like a yeah. you know, snack bar and she's yeah. like oh cool she's like She's like, this is really good. You should, can you, can you kind of like show me how you did it? And I was like, I don't really, I just kind of like throw stuff together. Like, <laughs> and I mix it up and like, just like, just cut it and you know, serve it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I can't really show you. Like, I don't uh -huh. really know. And she's like, we'll try. So I brought my stuff one day to train and then I made it and 
judge said, this is really good. Again, what do you call it? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I, it's like so frozen. you'd cook it and then you and then you freeze no, it. No, yeah, no cooking. It's like literally mix the ingredients. Oh, and then you put it in the freezer. You mix the ingredients together, freeze it or cut it, and then freeze it, and then just pop it out and put it in. I was putting it in a plastic bag. Uh huh. And how does it say like frozen for before like the the climate gets to? I mean, I don't want to say like they call it like the sweat factor, like the bar sweat because yeah, it's so yeah. hot outside, but like, you know, the... But in the wintertime here, you're... you're yeah, you're, you're golden, yeah. I mean, like, it comes out of the freezer, and I mean, it can thaw in, you know, a couple minutes. The okay. fridge easier, you know, like, some people like to eat it right out of the freezer. Like, normal freezers don't do the deep freeze. Like, we have, yeah. deep, we have deep freezers now. Yeah, yeah. So these deep freezers, I wouldn't recommend pulling it right out and biting it. Again, just because like a frozen sticker bar. It's Literally, like, one, one of my yeah, it's like, my raw, yeah, it's like yeah, it's like you're gonna you're gonna you know, God forbid, someone chips their tooth, but like, you know, I always say like, give it a second. Okay. You know, now that we're serving a pack, I'm always like, if it's super cold, just do this with it. Yeah. And then like it like warms it up enough where like you eat it, but the the the, the bar itself can sit out. It, it's it's you know nothing spoils in it. You can take it with you. Obviously, if it's sitting out for a period of time and you like mash it and like try yeah. it. it's gonna obviously change uh, but no from just going back to it I started making it this lady sat me down and she said well what do you call it and I was like it's like a frozen protein bar fro pro and she was just like give me your credit card and I was like I really can't be spending any money she's like no 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 trust me she makes like eight websites or buys eight domains domains yeah no idea what she's doing uh, and she's like, like, right. eight, like eight bucks a piece. You're like, yeah, shit, that's yeah. my food for the week. Yeah, it was like, like hundred bucks. I was like, all right, cool. Like, what do you do? She's like, well, for the next two years, you own uh, GoForPro.com. Go, yeah, 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 and yeah, just yeah. listed all these things. I was like, okay, what does that mean? She's like, well, now you go test your product. Ugh. And I said, I still don't know what you're fucking talking about. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. And she was just like, you have a great product. Work on it, develop it. And she's like, you know, and if I can help you in any way, let me know. And it was really nice of her because she was in like marketing and she had an event planning company. She does a lot of different things. And she's like one of those people that's just like always like, yeah, yeah. And I, I, learned I, that. I love that shit. I learned that about her. And she's a successful woman in Boca and yeah. kids and family. The whole awesome. deal. You guys still talk? Yeah. I, I literally, I bumped into her daughter for lunch uh, last week. And like, I talked to her last week and she works with clients. I'm like, we still get to communicate. And Good. It's funny. We come back to the fact that like. We were sitting at her kitchen table in, you know, West Boca, and she was essentially like, "I'm on a bike," and she's like, "Do you remember when?" I'm like, "Yeah." But the crazy the thing is, is huge, man. The crazy thing is, I didn't do anything with it for like a year. Oh, really? Because I was really afraid of what people thought, and I was like, you know, no one was gonna, no one was gonna try a bar made from a guy who lost everything, yeah. who was like a bum riding around a bike, and this is how I thought about myself. Yeah, like, yeah. There was like a lot, a lot of like. My life was getting back on track, but I was still super embarrassed about how everything went down uh -huh. and how public, you know, my... You didn't think that was the path either, maybe? No, I felt really strong. Like, yeah, I was like, I'm dying. It's the first time I'm feeling good about myself, but, like, I still was beating myself yeah, up. Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Right. And I, and I just, you know, I got to the point where, uh, slash, you know, Slash Fitness, um, yeah, slash they were just opening up. And, uh, you know, I've been talking to those guys about, like, you know, doing some classes and kind of being a part of what they were doing and, and, and doing whatever I could and you know I kind of started working out there and, and training some classes and getting to know people and then you know I just you know I, one day I asked I said hey you guys mind if I like bring in the snack bar I've been working on like just to get feedback and I don't want anybody's you know to know it's mine and I just I just want feedback to see if people like it because like I still again was embarrassed uh -huh. so I brought it in after classes every class whether I taught or not they're like oh yeah guys we got this snack bar over here uh Sure. You know, one of our friends makes it, let us know what you think, and people tried it. I only had one flavor, which is the cacao, which is the original chocolate bar. And people were like, wow, this is really good. Uh -huh. And I was like, wow, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. yes. And I was like, <laughs> feeling good. And like, yeah, no because one... you're dealing with some, not poofy, but you're dealing with some people that have some high standards at Slash oh, Fitness. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, you go to a, you go to a place, Delray, Boca, and like, you, you know, you're paying for a service, you're paying for something, you want it to be good, you want it to feel good. Exactly, like, yeah. Thing. Like, no. Like you have a fantastic business here. Like people pay quality to come here to get quality. Thank right? you, thank you, thank you. And it's like, at that point, it was just getting feedback. Like I even went back, I think like two, three months ago, and I found like the paper pieces of paper that people wrote their responses on. I kept them. Really? Space. They were in a folder. And I was like, oh man, I can't believe I have this stuff. That's sick. And you know, from there, it was just, 
I met someone that was training there. She owned a juice bar. She was like, hey, I want to try this, but I can't have anything because I was using whey protein, so dairy. She's like, can you work with um, uh, plant-based protein? And I was like, I don't really know anything about it. She's like, tell me about it. Must be juice buzz. No, it wasn't. It was funny. It was before Juice Buzz was open. Really? And this was a, a store in Boca that's no longer there. Oh, really? It's called Juiceateria. I remember Juiceateria. And this girl, Ch- this girl Chelsea, uh, uh-huh. was working out. She's like, you know, work with this, work with that. So I figured out how to make it with plant-based protein, change a couple of things up. And and I, I said, all right, now it's plant-based. And we tried it again. And we put it out in Slash. And people tried it. Still, like, still good feedback? People were loving it. I'm like, wow, this tastes like even better. It tastes like more like... It tastes like healthier because okay. the other one, you know, was whey and dairy that kind of had like a chemical yeah. like, like I always said, it's like, you could tell the difference if I made one with whey and one with not. And we don't do that. It's a plant-based product. So, so now it's only, only plant-based. plant-based. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so everyone brought, can eat it now. Yeah. yeah essentially yeah, what they were better. said is like a lot of people can't have dairy because of inflammation exactly. and like all the things like dairy, uh, upset stomach, diarrhea, you know, whatever Dude, it is, all that stuff, me. that dairy bloating, whatever. So we did plant-based and most people can break down anything plant-based for, yeah. for, for the most part you know again a lot of people would say hey man you're using peanuts you know peanut butter is you know not the healthiest nut it's considered a dirty nut I, listen I understand I said but if it was really that bad and I understand there's some people that don't like it and I'm not I'm not here to debate peanut butter it's one of the most consumed products in America and across like hands down coffee peanut butter everybody eats it for the most part my favorite the they're allergic my favorite like late night food is peanut butter with an apple. Like I mean, that's just that's just what I do. Yeah, peanut butter apple, peanut butter banana. And I mean, but it's better than that half a gallon of ice cream that ninety percent of America goes with. And that is my favorite too. Yeah. But, <laughs> it was really funny, man. Like I just, you know, I I, um, I I brought her the bar. She tried. She this is great. She goes, make me a hundred. And I was like, I. Yo, really? Like, well, you know, figure it out. Like, you know, you bring yeah, yeah. these little things. You know, I have a store. Bring me a hundred. Wrap, whatever. Wrap so I figured, you know, I went, bought like saran wrap, cut out squares, wrapped them, put a sticker on them, brought her a hundred bars. Like, it took me a while to do. Uh huh. I was doing this out of my house. And I was like, you know, just so you know, this out of my house. Like, completely illegal. Like, like, <laughs> she's like, well, under the cottage act, yeah. you know, for people that do, you know, green markets. Yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. She goes, I'll tell, I'll put the sign up. She goes, I'll say this is made in someone's home so people know it's not a commercial product. Exactly. I was like, okay, I don't really know what that means, but yeah. like, I trust you. And she, and I, yeah. I'm like, well, how does this work? She's like, give me the bars. If I sell them, great. If not, you know, uh, you, you try. Uh, literally three days later, she called me up. She's like, I need 100 more. I sold that. And I was like, are you serious? Like, are you mad? Like, you <laughs> She's like, no, no, people love what, it. What was the, what was the, uh, the, the retail on the bar then? Man, I think it was like, I think it was like two bucks retail. Okay. You know, and it was a smaller bar, it was hand cut, so like they weren't all the same size, the same weight. Like, yeah, yeah, like, people like taking like through them, I want this. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I remember because like I was making them in a tray and like the corners were rounded and not squares like yeah, the other yeah. ones. And people were like, oh man, I got a rounded one. This is smaller than this one. This is bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm working on it. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know, and yeah. again, like it. As a person that always wanted to people please and care what other people thought, I was like, you figured I was, it out. I was, yeah, I figured it out. And we got to a point where, you know, she said, "Hey, meet my friend Jax, who just opened Juice Buzz." Bar, yeah. And I went over to Juice Buzz, and she gave me a chance and said, "Let me get you know twenty of these, and if you could make another flavor, that would be great." And I was like, "Oh, I never thought of that." I'm like, why don't I try a different flavor? Try a different flavor. And slowly, I just you know, in addition to training, in addition to you know training outside and, and, and literally working seven days a week, this like little snack bar just started to kind of just grow. And then I got a job in the treatment industry and I was working in the treatment industry and that was like like a lot of my time. And yeah. I was still training, so I was getting up still. Like, you know, I'd always wake up early. I'd always have time for my pro, like my protocol and what I do. Every yeah, morning. mornings are the best thing in the world. Best thing in the world for me. I yeah. love it and like every time I read someone that's super successful, they get up early, they have a routine, they stick to that routine and good things happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually did a, a promo video on, you know, getting up early and how, he, I have a business mentor, James Pastore, I don't know if you know James, um, really successful guy, and then David, who owned Champion Porsche, who actually oh, wow. just died, he slipped on his boat and uh, yeah, cracked his head open, passed away, but 
I couldn't sleep one night. I got up. I'm in the gym at like five o'clock in the morning. And I walk in the gym at the Boca Resort, and he's the only person in the gym. And I said, "David, what's the matter? You're, you know, he's, you know, he came here. He was a patient. And he was 56 years old at the time. Died at 62. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, "What are you doing here?" He goes, "Well, how else should I start my day?" He gets up and he watches the stock market, and he learns what's going on in the world, and then he works out, and then he goes home and takes a shower does a little bit of a meditation, figures out what he wants to do today, organizes his entire day, and while 90% of the country is still sleeping, he's already accomplished more than they will by noon. Yeah. So, because there's, there's, there's well just no, there's no interference. Right. Right? No distractions. No distractions. You can get places quickly, you know. You, you, <laughs> That's the best day. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I dislike driving in the middle of the day. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough, especially, you know, when season comes back around. I mean, I, I walk to Meisner Park from my house and have dinner, and, and kind of that's the angle that I take. But if I can interrupt real quick with you, your story, and I, I'll, I'll let you hop back on track. What's really funny is that you and I started off on the entrepreneurial business almost the exact same way, and it's so crazy because, you know, we've known each other kind of better recently than before. Right. Through before. Other yeah, yeah. But I was selling motorcycles when I moved down here in 2000, and I was stunt riding motorcycles. And this guy, Tim Malloy, came in to buy a motorcycle. Don't know where he is now. If you happen to watch this, give me a call, Tim, because I owe you a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, he came in to service his motorcycle. And I was a sales guy there. I was a re- I've always been a really good sales guy. He comes in to service his BMW bike. And I, during the process, I end up selling him a new motorcycle, trading that one in, and he leaves. And I didn't even realize what I was doing. I just was you know, kind of sold against the fact that he should get the bike serviced and showed him some new stuff and he ended up right. saying screw it. Yeah. So he came in on the motorcycle and he was waiting for his wife to pick him up, his wife until he left. Twenty five minutes later he comes back in like a four thirty Ferrari and he tells me to get in the car. And I said, Tim, I, I work here, you know. I can't just leave. I can't just leave. Right. He's like, get in my car, you don't work here anymore. And I was like, Really? Well, well what am I doing? He's like, Well I'm gonna teach you the mortgage business. And it was in two thousand. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got in the car and uh, I said, Tim, you know, man, I, I'm 20 years old. I make 800 bucks a week here, man. Like, that's really good money for me. And, it, and he's like, don't worry. I'll pay you the $800 a week until you make 3000 a week. And I was like, all right, I'm in the car. Let's yeah, get out of here. Sounds like a plan, 100%. So, yeah, dude, he, he brought me to Summit Capital. He, he taught me the business, and I opened my own mortgage business, and then got a debt consolidation, and then... I don't know how I ended up here, but but I did. I wanted something that was more residual, mm-hmm. um, and not starting over each month. You know what I mean? Like your business. Yeah. Like you have a buyer, they keep buying. They refer more people, they keep buying. Yep. You're never probably unless something really crazy happens, ever going to make less the following year. It's just never going to happen if you're trying focus on business for that development. Not to happen. Yeah, yeah, business development's huge. You might hit stagnant periods to where you stay flat for two or three years, but going backwards is the worst thing really that can happen. Right. Maybe your net might go down because you have to put more back in the business, but if that gross number continues to grow, it's an amazing thing. And uh, you know, I'm witnessing a lot of growth this year, so my pocket hurts a little bit more, but the business looks a lot better, so that, that's great. You know.